one thing which I want to cover is how do you install a plugin, right? Uh, but what is the Backstage plugin? So uh, if you go to backstage.io slash plugins, you will find plenty of plugins in here. Um, and uh, it's about 200 plus. Um, but plugins are essentially mostly UI plugins that you can use to uh, change this view. So plugins you can use to like add new tabs here, add new cards here, um, pretty much pretty much that. So let's install a very simple plugin called um, like the GitHub Actions plugin so that you can view the CI CD uh, in there. So let's go to GitHub Actions. Uh, let's open that. So every plugin um, has two parts, uh, the front end and the back end. Now, not every plugin needs to have a back end. So if you do not see the back end in the name of the plugin, it means it doesn't have back end. So go here. Um, this repository has a lot of plugins, backstage slash community plugins. Um, so you can see plugins slash um, uh, you can see plugin slash GitHub Actions, but you can see all the other plugins. Now, uh, some plugins like let's say um, Jenkins will have backend plugins as well. So you see this and you see slash backend. So backend plugins um, mean you have to install it in two places. So always check whether a plugin has a front end and a back end, right? GitHub Action does not have a back end, which means it's a purely UI plugin. So what does this need? Um, the best place to read plugin docs is, is the readme of the plugin. That's supposed to be updated all the time. If there's any change, they change the readme of the plugin. So come here, find the readme, go through this uh, anytime you're installing plugins. So this is saying you need a GitHub OAuth app for this plugin to work. And that is why it does not have a backend because it authenticates the user and shows using the user information. Um, then it's saying you need this annotation added in your entity so that the GitHub Actions plugin works. Now, most plugins require an, an annotation. Um, that is one thing that's gonna be extremely challenging in the adoption, but users will have to update their YAML. Every user, every developer will have to do that to for the plugins to work. Um, so that's just uh, something that I find very difficult. Um, so this is done for us. This we can add. Uh, how do you install a plugin? There's going to be a command. Just purely copy that. Um, go ahead and just run it. So here I can run this. This is adding to the front end. So we're gonna we're gonna restart our front end. to run some music. Okay, so my command is running. Uh, need to restart my back end. Sorry, front end here. Okay, the action plugin installed. Now my project, this is not there, so there's no 
um, the, the CI CD tab, first of all, this needs to be configured, like what plugin to render, the UI part of it. So that is step number two of a plugin configuration is what do we render here, right? So let's go to, um, go to our code base and go to entity page.tsx, where is it? App.tsx, no, so, okay. So go to packages app, source components, catalog and that's where you'll find the entity based on TSX. So this page, this is the in one page which controls what gets rendered for different components. So here you can say if this is a component then we'll render the component page which is here. Now for the component you can also have sub pages based on the type. So you can say if this is service, website, if not render this default one. So go to your service entity page and this is where you see uh, the thing. So CICD content is what we need to update. What is the CICD content? Um, here you don't have anything. It's just saying basically you don't have anything. Now let's add, let's un uncomment this. So here it's showing you the GitHub Actions example. But if you look at the plugin docs, it will tell you what to install. So here it's telling you, first of all, you install this component, then you import this component. Okay, my components are imported and it's just telling you to add as a tab, which is um, already added. can see it's added here to the CICD content and slash CICD. So you don't need to follow this, just need to this, the, add the component. So if you come here, you see it's, it's checking whether the GitHub Actions is available or not. What does this mean? It's, it means it checks for the, uh, the project slug uh, annotation that's added. Uh, so let's see uh, what it looks right now. It's gonna say it's not available because our entity does not have that annotation github.com slash project slug so we will need to add that let's go edit so we add github.com slash project slug and this is Orco Hunter slash IDP ingestion example. But depends if we have any action runs here or not. Um, looks like I don't. So if I had GitHub Actions run here, I would have used it. I'm gonna use some other repository where I have GitHub Actions. So I have this other project called the page speaks. I'm gonna configure that here. Hit refresh, reload, go to CSCD, and now it's working. Now it's asking me to sign in via GitHub. It's gonna use the same GitHub OAuth app that I've configured for sign in. And based on whether I have access to that um, repository, it's gonna use it. Now it's saying the component has GitHub action, but no data was found. Have you created any workflows? Click on the button to. Um, so let's take a look at that repository. Oh, okay. It's actually not Orco Hunter. It's like I, mo I moved it to an org. Yes, so there we go. This is the repository slug. Slug means um, org slash repository. 
Okay, uh, I've got this. Let's hit refresh. Then we need to reload the entity back here. Got the plugin working. This is Grab Actions plugin showing us the recent um, executions of our repository. So that is one step of installing a plugin. Now, mostly you have to take care of the annotation. You have to take care of the um, config that it needs, the authentication that it needs. So let's take a look at some, some other plugins here, right? Tanitrace, for example. So this is how this plugin looks. Um, so most of the steps include like installation, um, authentication, so generating like an API key for that. And then you need to add this uh, proxy endpoint. Um, if it's a front-end plugin, if it needs to talk to Dynatrace API, it needs access to the API token. Now. The API token cannot be exposed to the front end directly. That's why this proxy backend helps us connect to that API via a backend proxy. And then it could need more configuration like, hey, is the base URL, what is the base URL for my data address instance? It needs an annotation just like the other one. Uh, some plugins can have one or more annotations. Some plugins can also have one or more entity card. So, they, they could either be a card that they're exposing on overview page or a tab they're exporting or a full page plugin. A very good example for that is um, page duty. So if you see here, I love this plugin, it's very, um, very in, uh, yeah, lots of features in there. So, all right, um, this is a card, but they also have a tab view, which they have not uh, added here for some reason. Um, that's fine, that's okay. Um, oh, uh, there, we, there we are. Yeah, so you see here. So this is a card. This is another small card that they export. And this is a full page uh, plugin from PageDuty. So you can choose one or the other. You can choose all of it, doesn't matter. So now we have installed a plugin. Um, let's try to install a backend plugin as well. Um, so that you get a flavor. With the new backend system, it should be easier to install backend plugins. So one of the one of the plugins which has a backend is uh, very few plugins have backend. First of all, so um, let's take a look at Jenkins, maybe. Yes, so Jenkins backend. Um, in the new backend system, you need to install a package, and all you need to do is just add this line in your backend uh, index.tsx. That's it. Um, this thing is not needed. This was the old. Um, this was the old uh, backend system. Um, so now this needs a new config and all of that. So but installing backend plugin should be extremely simple. It should be just this. 